students we now will uh, try to understand uh, the suprahyoid and infrahyoid muscles suprahyoid muscles are those muscles which uh, which are above the hyoid bone so if you can see here this is the hyoid bone which is in the present in the neck and the muscles which are above that those are called as the suprahyoid muscles supra means above above the hyoid bone is called a suprahyoid and the muscles which are below the hyoid bone those are called infrahyoid muscles infra means below infrahyoid below the hyoid bone the muscles which are present they are called as infrahyoid muscles so suprahyoid muscles above the hyoid bone and infrahyoid muscles below the hyoid bone so first we will try to understand which are the suprahyoid muscle the first muscle in the suprahyoid is the digastric muscle we have already seen the digastric muscle uh, in the neck so this is the digastric muscle it has an anterior belly and a posterior belly so i had told you this is called a digastric because it has two bellies anterior belly and posterior belly and the middle part uh, the tendon part of this muscle is held in its position by a facial sling which uh, is coming from the hyoid bone so that's why this muscle is held in its position by this facial sling which is coming from the hyoid bone so this is the anterior belly this is the posterior belly of the digastric this is the first muscle of the uh, suprahyoid muscle the second suprahyoid muscle is the stylohyoid if you can see here there is a muscle just beside the posterior belly of digastric this is called as uh, the styloid it take origin from the styloid process and get inserted to the hyoid bone that's what is called as stylohyoid as I had told you before, most of the muscles of the neck, if you see the observe the name, the name itself indicates the origin and insertion of the muscles. So because it takes origin from the steroid person and getting inserted to the hyoid bone, that's why it is called as stylohyoid. The third muscle here is mylohyoid. If you can see here, there is a muscle. Here also you can see in this picture, this is the mylohyoid. Here also you can see this is the mylohyoid. So this is the muscle which take origin uh, from a line here. If you see the medial side of the mandible, uh, if you can see here, this, there will be a line. This line here is called as the mylohyoid line. So this muscle will be taking origin from this mylohyoid line and get inserted to the hyoid bone. So that's why this is called as the mylohyoid muscle. And the fourth muscle is, it has two parts, the genohyoid. If you see here, uh, the again, this muscle will take origin from the medial side. There are tubercles here called a superior genial tubercles and inferior genial tubercles. So this muscle will take origin from the inferior genial tubercle and get inserted to the hyoid bone. That's what is called as the genohyoid. The second part of it, it takes origin from the hyoid bone and get inserted to the uh, some of the fibers from here will take origin uh, from the hyoid bone and get inserted to the tongue. So that's why it is called as the hyoglossus. So it is part of this muscle which uh, together forms the fourth muscle, genohyoid and the hyoglossus. The, the genohyoid and some of the fibers which take origin from the hyoid bone and get inserted to the tongue. So they are called as the hyoglossus. So these are some of the uh, suprahyoid muscles, the four suprahyoid muscles. So there are four suprahyoid muscles and four infrahyoid muscles, which you should know. So the suprahyoid muscles are digastric, stylohyoid, mylohyoid, and genohyoid with its uh, component, uh, which is called as hyoglossus. Now coming to the infrahyoid muscles, which are the infrahyoid muscles? Uh, one is the sternohyoid. So this muscle, as the name indicates, take origin from the manibrum sternum and get inserted to the hyoid bone. So this muscle is called as the sternohyoid, which take origin from the sternum and get inserted to the hyoid bone. The second muscle is the sternothyroid. If you can see beside this sternohyoid, there is one more muscle which take origin from the again from the sternum, but it doesn't go up to the hyoid, but it get inserted to the cartilage here which is the thyroid cartilage so it get inserted to the thyroid cartilage so this is called as the sternothyroid sternothyroid takes origin from the sternoid, uh, sternum and get inserted to the thyroid cartilage this is the second muscle sternothyroid the third muscle is the thyroid which take origin from the 
thyroid cartilage and get inserted to the hyoid bone. This small muscle here, this is called as the thyroid. And the fourth muscle is omohyoid. You already seen the omohyoid. So we have the superior belly here. This is the inferior belly, which divides the uh, the triangles of the neck. The posterior uh, triangle will be divided by the inferior belly, and the anterior triangles are divided by the the superior belly. So this is the omohyoid muscle with the superior belly here. and this is the inferior belly so these are the four infrahyoid muscles if you see the nerve supply of all these muscles the infrahyoid muscles are all supplied by something called as the ansa cervicalis this is a plexus formed by the ventral rami of c1 c2 and c3 these are the c1 c2 and c3 the ventral rami of this c1 first cervical nerve second and third cervical nerves will join together and they form a, a plexus and this looks like a chain so this plexus which is giving branches to all this infrahyoid muscle this is called as the ansa cervicalis so you should remember that all the infrahyoid muscles are supplied by ansa cervicalis ansa cervicalis is formed by the ventral rami of first second and third uh, cervical nerves okay now we'll try to study these muscles one by one in detail okay so the first muscle is the sternohyoid so the first muscle here we can see here this is the sternohyoid as i said the name itself indicate the origin insertion if you see so this muscle will be taking origin from the sternum and get inserted to the hyoid bone so this is taking origin from the capsule of the sternoclavicular joint here okay so this is the sternoclavicular joint near the joint it takes origin from both uh, some part from the sternal part and some part from the the capsule itself so this muscle which take origin from the capsule sternoclavicular joint and uh, adjacent part of the mandibulum as well as the clavicle and get inserted to the lower border of the hyoid bone so this muscle is called as the sternohyoid so the name itself indicates the origin as well as the insertion the action is the first action of this muscle is a depressor of the larynx and the hyoid bone and the floor of the mouth if you can see here this is the hyoid bone so when this muscle contracts because this is the origin and this is the insertion the origin will be always fixed and the insertion part will be the part which will be moving so when this muscle contract it will pull this bone downwards this hyoid bone downwards so it will help in the depression of the hyoid bone as well as depression because deep inside we have the larynx so it will depress the larynx also and when it uh, comes down it also pulls the suprahyoid muscle so it pulls even the floor of the oral cavity or the floor of the mouth so uh, this is the function so it depresses the larynx it depresses the hyoid bone as well as it depresses the it uh, depresses the floor of the uh, oral cavity or mouth second thing is when this muscle is stabilized so this muscle uh, when this bone is stabilized because whenever the muscle suprahyoid muscles are supposed to act then this bone has to be stabilized so it also helps in the stabilization of the hyoid bone during depression of the mandible so whenever these muscles suprahyoid muscles are supposed to contract then this bone this bone becomes the origin for all this muscle so it has to be fixed so it has to be fixed so that when the muscle contract they have to bring the floor of the oral cavity as well as depressor depression of even the mandible if they want to depress the mandible bring the mandible down then this has to be held in its position so this muscle uh, infrahyoid muscles also helps in the stabilization of the hyoid bone one is it they can bring it down and pull the larynx as well as the oral cavity downwards or they can also these infrahyoid muscles can also fix this hyoid bone in its position because this hyoid bone is the bone which is floating here okay there is no connection between this bone with other other bones so it is floating between the muscle so it has to be fixed so that this uh, the suprahyoid muscles can uh, start acting 
so this uh, bone can be stabilized by the infrared muscles the third function is the position of the heart bone is determined by the myeloid and infrared muscles so the position of the heart bone is determined by the the action of these muscles either they can bring it down or they can hold it in its position or any other position so these infrared muscles are very important in the determination of the myeloid as well as the uh, infrared muscles so so this heart bone will be stabilized as well as depressed as well as its uh, position is determined by all these infrared muscles. these are some of the actions of the sternohyoid coming to the nerve supply as i said before so all the infrared muscles are supplied by the ansa cervicalis so the sternohyoid will be supplied by fibers of second and third cervical nerve by again via the uh, ansa cervicalis so this is about the the first infrared muscle that is the sternohyoid coming to the next muscle infrared muscle that is the sternothyroid so you can see this is the sternohyoid and the second muscle is the the sterno thyroid so it is shown on the other side because it is deep inside this uh, sternohyoid muscle so here will be the sternothyroid so it here the sternohyoid has been removed so that you can see the deeper muscle that is the sternothyroid so as the name indicates this muscle will be taking origin from the sternum the posterior surface of the sternum and get inserted to the thyroid cartilage there is a line here on the uh, the uh, external surface of the lamina of the cartilage this is called as the oblique line so this muscle get inserted on the oblique line of the thyroid cartilage so this muscle will take origin from the sternum and get inserted to the thyroid cartilage so that's what is called a sternothyroid coming to the nerve supply again as you know the nerve supply is same for all infrared muscles as well as the actions are also same for all the muscle infrared muscles so if you remember the nerve supply and action of one muscle infrared muscle you can write it for all the infrared muscle so the nerve supply for all these muscle is by the ansa cervicalis again the fibers of second and third cervical nerve will be supplying the sternothyroid and the actions are also same one is a depressor of the larynx when this muscle contract again it will bring the thyroid cartilage downwards and also pulls the hyoid bone downwards so it helps in the depression of the hyoid bone as well as the larynx as well as the floor of the oral cavity second is it stabilizes the hyoid bone during the action of the suprahyoid muscles when the suprahyoid muscles are supposed to act and they want to bring the uh, the mandible downwards then at that time this has to be stabilized so it also these infrared muscles also stabilizes the the hyoid bone the third is the position of the hyoid bone is determined by the myeloid as well as the infrared muscles so this is also a infrared muscle so this also uh, determines the position of the hyoid bone so these are some of the uh, actions of the sternothyroid the third muscle is the omohyoid so this is the omohyoid muscle so uh, this muscle will be taking origin from the uh, the, uh, the inferior belly will be taking origin from the upper border of the scapula if you can see here uh, it has not been shown the scapula it will be taking origin from the upper border of the scapula near the supra scapula notch there is a notch on the uh, superior border of the scapula that is called as uh, the supra scapula notch and this muscle will be taking origin near the supra scapula notch and the ligament the insertion will be to the hyoid bone so the origin will be taken from the scapula and the insertion will be to the hyoid bone so this muscle will be take, uh, getting inserted to the lower border of the hyoid bone this is the hyoid bone and this is the lower border it will be getting inserted to the lower border of the hyoid bo bone the superior and inferior belly are attached to each other by the intermediate tendon which is anchored to the clavicle and manubrium by the facial sling just like the digastric muscle so this is the digastric muscle held in its position by the facial sling similarly the superior and inferior belly of the uh, of this muscle uh, are connected to each other by a 
tendon and this tendon is held in its position by a facial sling similar like here with the facial sling has been shown here it has not been shown so there is a, there will be also a facial sling which will be anchored to the clavicle as well as the manubrium so from the here there will be a facial sling which will be uh, holding the two tendons of the the two bellies uh, the tendon of the two bellies of the uh, omohoid okay so just like the facial uh, sling has been shown here here there will be also a facial sling okay so this is the omohoid muscles the origin is from the scapula and the insertion is into the hyoid bone actions are same as that of all the infrared muscle the th three same actions and the nurse supply is also same the answer cervical is the superior belly is supplied by the uh, the first cervical uh, nerve through the hypoglossal nerve and the inferior belly from the c2 and c3 uh, through the uh, answer cervicalis so this is about the infra third infrared muscle and the last infrared muscle is the thyroid very small muscle which take origin from the the uh, the thyroid cart uh, thyroid cartilage and get inserted to the hair bone so that's what's called as thyroid so this muscle will be taking origin from the oblique line as i told there will be an oblique line here so it will be taking origin from the oblique line of the thyroid cartilage and get inserted to the lower border of the greater cornu of the hair bone uh, there are two cornus for the hair bone there will be a lesser cornu and a greater cornu so this is a greater cornu so it will be getting inserted to the greater cornu of the uh, the hyoid bone uh, actions and nerve supply again is same as that of the the all other infrared muscles especially from the c1 so if you can see here the, the c1 get which is uh, mainly uh, supplying the the thyroid muscle the fibers of c1 through the hypoglossal nerve okay so if you can see here this is the hypoglossal nerve and this is the c1 nerve it is passing through the hypoglossal nerve and get then it uh, innervates this muscle that is the thyroid so these are the four infrared muscle now we will talk about the suprahyoid muscles the first muscle is the digastric muscle so the origin of this muscle is from the posterior belly of the mastoid process so the posterior belly will be taking origin from the mastoid process uh, there is a notch there of the temporal bone so uh, there will be a mastoid notch on the temporal bone so it will be taking origin from the the uh, master notch this is the posterior belly what about the anterior belly it will be taking origin from a depression if you see uh, from the again from the inside uh, the uh, the inner part of the mandible there will be the small two depressions here those are called as the digastric fossa so the anterior belly will be taking origin from the digastric fossa here from the uh, inside uh, uh, of the mandible and the posterior belly will be taking origin from the master notch and both these bellies are connected to each other by a tendon and this tendon is held in its position as i said before by a facial sling which will be attached to the hyoid bone uh, the nerve supply uh, is uh, slightly unique here because this muscle is supplied by two nerves usually most of the muscles are supplied by the only one nerve but rarely um, it will be supplied by two nerves this is also supplied by the two nerves because the origin of the development of these muscles is different even the development of these muscles the anti and possible is different and hence the even the nerve supply is different coming to the posterior belly is supplied by the facial nerve facial nerve and the anterior belly is supplied by the myelohyoid branch of the inf uh, inferior alveolar nerve that is the mandibular nerve so this uh, the posterior belly is supplied by the seventh cranial nerve and this anterior belly is supplied by the fifth cranial nerve why so that you will study when you study the development so development is they, they are different and hence they are supplied by the uh, depending on the developmental origin okay this is the posterior belly supplied by the facial nerve and the anterior belly supplied by the mandibular nerve 
so what is the actions of these uh, of this muscle so one is because it is below the uh, the mandible so the main action will be when it acts when it contract it will help in the uh, depression of the mandible itself so it depresses as well as retracts the chin so it depresses down as well as it also helps in the retraction of this mandible the second is if this is stabilized this if this mandible is stabilized then it, when this muscle contract it helps in the elevation of the hyoid bone itself so whenever the mandible is fixed then it helps in the pulling of the hyoid bone upwards and, and this action is especially helpful in deglutition during swallowing of the food particles or something like that at that time uh, this uh, the uh, elevation of the hyoid bone is necessary at that time so this muscle will contract and the mandible will be fixed and this will help in the elevation of the hyoid bone and swallowing and if this bone is have stabilized hyoid bone with the infrared muscle we have studied that this bone is uh, stabilized by the infrared muscle then it helps in the depression of the mandible as well as retraction of the mandible so these are some of the actions of this muscle called as the digastric here also you can see this is the anti belly which is taking origin from small fossa here which is called as the digastric fossa and the post this is the posse belly which is taking origin from the mastoid notch the second muscle here is the stylohyoid muscle so this is the stylohyoid muscle which as the name indicates it takes origin from the stylohyoid process this is called as the stylohyoid process this takes origin from the middle part of the stylohyoid process and get inserted to the junction of body and greater corner of the hyoid bone so there is a part where there is junction of the body this is the body and the greater corner is this one so at that particular point this muscle will get inserted so this is the body and this is the the uh, greater corner so at the at the point where these two parts will meet that part will be the po point for the insertion of this muscle so this muscle will take origin from the stylohyoid process get inserted to the hyoid bone that's what is called as the stylohyoid the nerve supply is same as that of the the posterior belly of the digastric that is the the facial nerve okay so this is also supplied by the facial nerve here i have shown you that developmentally it develops on the second pharyngeal arch so that's why it is supplied by the second uh, by the facial nerve that you will study oh, what are this exactly during the development at the time you will come to know so this both the possibility as well as the stylo stylo hyoid muscle is supplied by the facial nerve action what are the actions it draws the hyoid bone upwards so whenever the uh, this anyhow this is stabilized already so whenever this muscle contract then it helps in the uh, elevation of the uh, the hyoid bone upwards as well as even backwards and elongates the floor of the mouth so whenever this muscle stylohyoid muscle contract so because this is the insertion point so it elevates the hyoid bone as well as pulls it backwards and that helps in the especially in the elongation of the floor of the oral cavity of the mouth okay here also you can see this is the stylohyoid taking uh, origin from the stylohyoid process is not seen but you can see the insertion of this muscle here okay so this is the stylohyoid the next muscle is the mylohyoid so this is the mylohyoid muscle here as i said this will be taking origin from the mylohyoid line and get inserted to the body of the hyoid bone as well as the median raphe this is the median raphe which we discuss when we discuss the the midline structure so the point where the two sides of the mylohyoid muscle will meet so there is a thin raphe here this is called as the median raphe so this muscle will be taking origin from the mylohyoid line and getting inserted to the hyoid bone especially and also it meets the other side of the muscle at this median raphe this is the median fibrous raphe okay the nerve supply is supplied by a nerve called as the mylohyoid branch or the mylohyoid nerve which is a branch of the inferior alveolar nerve 
so this muscle is supplied by the nerve of the uh, this muscle that is called as the uh, the myeloid nerve or the myeloid branch of the inferior alveolar nerve coming to the actions so whenever this muscle contract it helps in the elevation of the floor of the oral cavity so whenever the two sides of the muscle contract it helps in the elevation of the floor of the oral cavity itself and the tongue thus helping in again deglutition during swallowing so whenever you want to after achieving when you try to swallow at that time the whole of the oral cavity will try to move towards the roof so at that time this uh, the floor of the oral cavity is lifted by the <coughs> by this myeloid muscle so uh, there is a important point to be noted that when the two muscles myeloid muscles together they form they meet at this median raphe they form a gutter especially in the floor of the mouth and this and support of the tongue and hence called as the diaphragmatic oris this muscle which form the uh, floor of the oral cavity and this depression there will be depression at this point and this form the gutter of the floor of the oral cavity and because it gives support to the tongue so that's what is called as the diaphragmatic oris just like the diaphragm of the uh, Uh, abdomen which separates the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity this also acts as a diaphragm and it forms the floor of the oral cavity and it uh, separates the suprahyoid from the infrahyoid muscle so this part this because it forms a floor big floor so it is called as the diaphragmatic oris because it forms the floor of the oral cavity that's what is called as the diaphragmatic oris so this is the myeloid line you can see here and it forms the floor of the oral cavity so this is about the suprahyoid and infrahyoid muscles so these are my references and if you have any doubts you can ask me okay thank you